Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Clacking Keypad by Ambit Studio and the North Coast Modular Collective. So the clacking keypad is exactly as its name implies. So it is indeed a pad with nine keyboard keys uh, that you can press and play with, uh, which will then of course sense CV throughout your modular rack uh, in any way, shape or form you want it to be. Uh, so all nine of these are, can be modulated independently. So you can send in nine types of CV, which you can then, uh, well, gate with any of these keys. Um, there is a, well, uh, an eight volt or nine volt, whatever kind of volt you want uh, normalization in there. So if you just want to send a regular uh, gate, you can do that. Um, but it's just such a great way to explore what you can do within your modular rack even if you're not performing, even if you're just exploring the capabilities within your modular uh, well, device, you might say, um, this is great to actually just push it to the limit and make sure that you get a better understanding of your um, modular setup. So I don't want to spoil too much surprises, uh, but before we dive in, I do have to thank Ambit Studio uh, for making this unit available to me so we can actually film this, uh, this video. So again, Thanks so much. Uh, so for now, I would say make sure you're sitting down, you're relaxed, you might have something to drink, something to eat. Make sure you're all relaxed, uh, but not too relaxed because then you'll fall asleep because I want you guys to enjoy this. So for now, I would say, please everyone, here we go. So here we have the clacking keypads. Uh, which is a collaboration between Ambit Studio and the North Coast Modular Collective. And it is by far the most performative module that I've ever had on my channel. And that's <laughs> going to be very <laughs> confrontational for me because, as you know, I'm not the best musician out there, um, far from it, and uh, let alone the best performer there is. So I'll do my utmost, but uh, do... Uh, <laughs> do keep that in mind while we're uh, going through this video. So what we actually have here is we've got nine keys and then we've got nine inputs and nine outputs. And those of course correspond to each other. So this corresponds to that input and output and how those behave we'll get into later. Uh, the keys essentially are well, uh, computer keyboard keys and uh, you could just get your regular caps and the beauty is, and I got this nice, neat little tool with it that you can actually use to remove one of these keycaps. I'm just going to do that straight away. And what you'll see is that we just have a regular mechanical keyboard, uh, keyboard switch underneath. So in my case, I got the uh, Cherry Silent Reds, uh, which are very smooth, very, um, very silent, as, as the name implies switches. Uh, but if you truly want to get a clacking keypad, uh, which is quite noisy, you might want to swap these out or order them with something like a Cherry MX Blue, uh, which are much more clicky and uh, much more, well, uh, responsive, you might say. I personally prefer the uh, the reds for this, well, for, for, for this use case, because it is a very smooth experience to just play with these well, beautiful keys that you got there. Um, but that's enough about the keys. I, I do love them and I always find, find myself when I'm playing with my modular that I've got my fingers here and just uh, keep pressing them. So it's it's like uh, you see with certain gamers that if they sit down and they place their hands on a keyboard, they immediately go to the uh, sad W keys or the W a as D keys or however you want to call them. Um, so that is, that, that's a natural position. So that's also the reason why I've put them all the way on the left on this case that it's typically the the closest case to my rig. So it's, 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 it's very inviting, you might already say. So what can this then do? Well, that's of course the thing that we were uh, looking into. So. Uh, we have these nine inputs and outputs that then correspond to these keys. So one to nine. 
Uh, what you can then do is if we just grab the output of the first and we patch that into uh, our oscilloscope, you'll see that if I press down on it, I'm just going to get an 8 volt gate out of that. And you can indeed tweak that voltage. There is a um, there's a uh, calibration point for that, uh, but this is the the normal uh, situation. Uh, do keep in mind that everything is normal to the input in front of it. So if I do push anything into that first input, let me just grab an LFO there. There you go. And if I press that, you'll see that we have this very nice triangle LFO. I might want to up the frequency so we can see it a bit better. And this will then, of course, cascade down to all of these nine keys. So if I go to the ninth, you'll see that exact same LFO happening there. So keep that in mind if you are designing your, well, let's say your uh, clack and keypad layout. So without further ado, I, uh, I do want to just change the, um, the look right now. So I'll uh, reposition the camera so we can actually see what we're doing. I'll be right back. So here we now have a bit of a broader overview of the um, the setup that we're going to be working with. Uh, so front and center, we have the clack and key pads, and I'm just going to run you through some of its applications uh, that we have at our disposal here today. So one of the most well apparent or clear applications of the clack and keypad is, of course, to use it for finger drumming, and I'm gonna do my best and please everyone, please be gentle because as I said, I'm not very good at this. So I'm just gonna put this into the um, the foundation. So I'm gonna use that. Uh, but first, let me just make sure that we can see what we're doing. So I am gonna use the, well, the eight by eight buffered molds so we can actually see anything that we uh, patch in there. So I'm just gonna grab this and put this into the number eight. And if we then grab that one and put them this on the number eight and this on the number eight, then we have two outputs for the number eight. So I can patch it like that and I can patch it that way. So now we get that and we're not hearing anything, of course, because I haven't patched the actual sound. So let's immediately grab it into the mixer and then make sure that we patch the mix into today's, well, module that's gonna make any everything a bit more bearable. That's the, well, the Empress Effects Zoya Euro Bureau, which I've set up with a very slight delay and, um, and reverb, just to make things a bit, well, nicer to the ears. And we might now see We already get something something that we can work with okay great so next up we are gonna grab number eight there and we're just gonna patch that into uh, number seven and we then grab these two set them to number seven I like that uh, this one into the oscilloscope and the other one into the, let's grab it and put it into the proc for now. And I've got the proc set up as a snare drum. As you can hear, total, a total absence of talent, but still, I like it. And then let's do, um, yeah, let's do it something with the number six. Grab that and that a bit more further down there. Put this into the the one, which I have set in with a nice sample. Hopefully, and just grab a cable there, 
and patch that into the ES9 as well. So we will be able to see all three. Okay, and then let's do one more and let's grab the that one patch that into number five make sure that we patch these into number five like that that's right yeah that's that's triggering both of them this is going into the that one and let's grab another cable and I'm just going to use this to trigger the, um, the two OPFM by Super Synthesis because I, I like the sound it makes and it's always one of those things where I'm like okay well that's something I, I, I don't get enough use out of even though I, I'm truly in love with what it can do and how you can combine it with the, the, the Super Synthesis Fraser as well so let's see if I might need to open this up a bit might want to increase the ratio there a bit and let's do it with two hands as you can see probably a plethora of people that can do more interesting things with uh, these capabilities than I can do but with the same ease we can of course start to use something that ha does have rhythm and that is of course the Pam's new workout so what I'll do is I'll just reset this for now and let Pam's new workout do uh, the honors. There you go. And let's just disconnect these. And we'll then just grab. Well, let's start with, uh, with the bass drum. There you go. And let's say we wanna do it like, uh, whoa, that's a bit too much. I'm not sure what I did there, but I'm gonna put it at times two with a Euclidean rhythm of well let's say give it eight steps and make sure that we do seven of them already much better than I did then let's grab the the snare and let's give that a multiplier of two as well So what I'm actually planning to do right now, because right now we're not using the clacking keypad, but I'm just building a patch. And what I then want to introduce is how we can actually influence those kind of things by actually just using the clacking keypad to, well, to do all of the things that we want. So one thing you can of course do is you can of course say, well, I want to grab one of these buttons and just put that into the run So you can actually just hold it down and then make sure that that then controls Pam's new workout. Which is always nice, but then again, not, might not be the best use case, right? Uh, but again, it's something that you can use. Um, so let's just keep this running. I might just want to uh, create a bit more compelling patch here. So I'm just gonna grab Let's go 
the other one. this the other one this one so this is something that we can then work with so what I've then done is as I said I've set up the the, the Zoya Euro Bureau um, to have a very slight delay and a very slight um, reverb but what we can then do of course is we can actually just use the clacking keypad to influence that so what we might want to do is we want to grab the well here we go so I can actually patch one of the CVs from here like that so now you can see what the actual voltage is that's coming I'm not sure if you can see this on the video but if I press this you'll see this on the screen it's now patching in 8.1 volts and I can then patch that into let's say the mix for the in this case the delay As you can see, I press down on the on the button and the delay goes all the way to 100%. <laughs> Which might not be the exact thing that we want. And also, this is immediately instant. So we might want to consider actually using an envelope for that. So let's grab an envelope here on the... Uh, uh, the ornament in crime. So I'm just gonna say, okay, we'll just grab that. Make sure that we go a bit like that. Make, maybe make the you know, something like well, maybe maybe something like that. That's fine. Make sure that we patch it in there. As you can see, it's now much nicer. And we go all the way up and then go to a mix of 27, which is quite okay. And we can do the same thing, of course, for the reverb, which is going to be a bit more audible. So let's go to that. And let's see. So that's the mix there. There you go. You immediately get that additional reverb added to the to the mix, and that's just one of the effects that you can then start to trigger with it. Okay, well, that's that's perfect. The other things that we can then do is we can maybe get something like a loop in. But before we do that, let's get a bit of a melody going. And I've always got a melody loaded on the Hermit, so. I might want to start with that, patch that into the the Orna. I did hear that Nano Modules is going to be releasing new modules uh, sometime in early 2022. So I'm curious to see what's happening there. Let's make sure we patch it into the boundary and then grab another cable like this and I'm then just gonna make sure that we're not gonna be hearing the 2OP FM anymore apologies for that a bit more delay we're adding a bit more reverb that's of course something that you can then uh, work with uh, we can also use these of course to to influence any of the settings that we have on boundary so we might say okay well we want to grab another one here grab another ADSR so I might want to change this to an ADSR as well Come on. 
sorry for my hands being in the way. So let's grab that and then make sure that once we have the, the envelope set, grab another cable. And we might just say, we're gonna use that to increase the, the full length. Let's just uh, turn this down a bit. Which one am I using? This one. Pressing down, really short envelope there. I release it. If I flip the switch, now it's a longer one. Just a nice effect you can play with. So let's try something else. What I always like to do is I want to uh, use the loop. I've got the two HP loop right there and let's let's use it. So I might want to disconnect everything that we've got here. Like that. And just patch this into the in. There you go. And then make sure that we grab the output and patch that back into the Euro Bureau. Here we go. Make sure that we have a bit of the, the mix there. So nothing's happening. So you can indeed use it with the record button, but I like the well, more, well, more responsiveness of that one there. So let's grab another cable and I'm just gonna put it on number one there. Just uh, reset it. Let's reduce the mix a bit. This is the Fripatronics, so that's something that you can really nicely play with. Let's grab another sequence there. Might want to change the And you can actually start to build a full line of effects you want to uh, put through this. So you might want to say, well, I want to, I want to actually grab the, the output from the looper and uh, make sure that you then patch that into the euphoria, which is, a, which is a phaser, of course. So let's do it like that. And let's grab another output and make sure that we do that for the, for the feed. Because if we increased it, yeah, that's nice. So let's grab another one of these. Put that into key number three. If I press that,
This is just fun to play with. And then of course you can also go all the way overboard by actually starting to introduce things like the reduxer and the letter over. And right now I'm using this to do everything. So every bit of sound that comes in is gonna be do done like that. But what I do want to do is I'll, I just want to grab the, the oscillator and I want to patch that through the reduxer because I, that's something I, I truly think is, is a great, great thing to play with. And I'm just gonna make sure that that then goes, so that goes into that. Then I need to grab this again, and that needs to go into the boundary. That is not the right thing that I did there. No, apologies, I did this wrong. I need to grab this one and patch that into the Redux by Voices and then make sure that we patch this there. We might. I do want to make sure that we can hear this a bit better. one of the keys that we have available, number six. And I'm just gonna patch that directly into CV there. Something like that. So let me just press and make sure that we have a longer envelope there. And now I'm just gonna press on the Redux. don't like the redux you can actually just go into the drive as well just add a bit of color there so let's do the exact same thing there and just put some CV on there there we go kinds of crazy things just by playing with this so I do hope that this has given you a a better understanding of what you can do with the clacking keypads by Ambit Studio and the North Coast Modular Collective. Um, let's go back to the studio, let's wrap this up and um, I'm just gonna keep playing for a bit longer. Talk to you in a bit. So I truly hope you enjoyed this video on the clacking keypad by Ambit Studio and the North Coast Modular Collective. I've really had a blast, uh, on the one hand, getting to know this module, but also with the, well, the, the, the untrodden roads that this led me to. 
as you know, I'm not a trained musician. I'm not a trained performer. I love performing music. I love to make music and I love to create all of these videos as well. But this module really pushed me out of my comfort zone. And as I always say in both my professional life as all, well, also in my personal life and even in my creative life, as you might call this, uh, this channel, outside of the comfort zone, that's where you learn. And I've learned a lot of things and I know that I will grow as a, um, as a musician, as a performer by just using this module. And that being said, I will go as far as to say that everyone who is into Eurorack, into modular, should ser seriously consider adding the mod well, just the, 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 the clacking keypad to your rack. And the reason for that is even if you don't want to have any sort of hands-on control on your patch and on your mo uh, on your music if you are fully into generative sound design uh, generative uh, music generation even um, you sometimes need to have that so-called hand of good where you just want to push it slightly to the left or the right and the last thing you want to do is start to well operate the the parameters that you've got you don't want to change anything of that but what you do want to do occasionally is to introduce a bit of cv here or there and typically you don't have those capabilities at hand and i've chosen that word very very consciously because this is a very literally hands-on approach to do those things to say well i do want to just give this a bit of a nudge here i do want to make sure that we add a bit of lfo there and this has opened my eyes to all the things that i can do and grow into and learn going forward with this module within modular in general so that being said um, if you've got any space in your rack um, but even if you don't have any space in your rack seriously consider picking this up because this is something that will change the way you think about modular um, so i think that that's probably like the biggest uh, the biggest compliment i can give this this module in general and i well i, do, I don't typically go as far with these kind of recommendations so uh, this is a big thing for me so that being said i still hope you enjoyed this video that you took something away from this um, for now please make sure that you do review all of the links below. If you do want to help out this channel, make sure that you uh, use any of the affiliate links, uh, make sure that you uh, review any of the uh, Patreon plans, or just buy me a coffee. Uh, but the most important thing that you can do to help me is to keep watching my videos. And make sure that you give me any feedback, because. Um, outside of the comfort zone, that's where you learn, that's where you grow, but also based on feedback, whether it's positive, whether it's constructive, or some, even if it's very negative, uh, feel free to make sure that you share your feedback with me because that's how I can better myself, better this channel and grow as a person and as a professional. So make sure you do that. For now, I would just absolutely say thanks again, everyone, for uh, tuning in. I do have to thank Ambit Studio again for making sure that we were able to make this video. And please everyone, just stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, I hope to see you for my next video. Ta.